join kids hat family when can i open my gifts isn't it amazing people gave us so many gifts this halloween we'll open the gifts tomorrow morning it's too late now tofu you should sleep ah oh, please can i open them now no tofu it will make me happy if you'll show some patience patience is a virtue i'll just open it and then wrap it up again tia will not even know hey tofu you want to listen to a bedtime story yes yes you know that i love stories okay then but let me just warn you it's a scary one that's interesting i won't get scared dear magic castle there was a woman who lived in the countryside every evening she used to take her dog for a walk near the forest One evening they strayed off the path and mistakenly reached a ruined area where she saw a small cave Something was written on the entrance of the cave it read Do not enter the magic castle at midnight She went back home but could not stop thinking about it She also asked her neighborhood friend about the magic castle She also said that it's a bad omen to visit the place that nobody has ever visited. This increased the woman's curiosity and she decided to go to the magic castle at midnight. She reached the cave and entered inside, completely ignoring the warning sign. Upon crossing the cave, she saw the castle. She opened the door but another warning sign was written on it Do not enter Ignoring the sign yet again she moved further and reached the staircase The stairs kept squeaking with every footfall She reached another door but that also had a warning sign It read Do not open this door Ignoring it again, she tried to open the door. It appeared to be jammed. So the woman tried hard and pushed it harder. It finally opened with a loud sound. The woman entered the room and it was completely dark. She noticed moonlight coming from the window. The moonlight was falling on a long wooden object. She went near the object and found that it's a coffin. On it was another warning note. Do not open this coffin. And do you know what did the woman do? Yeah, she opened it. Yes, she opened it. You want to know what was inside? Yeah, was there a treasure? No. The woman opened the coffin and there were lots of colorful smarties. <laughs> what? Yes, this is what happens when you don't listen to your loved ones. I know you were going to open the presents without telling me. That's not right, Tofu. I get it. I'm sorry. I'll be patient and will only open the gift tomorrow morning. That's nice. Listening to your loved ones can save you from a lot of trouble, Tofu. Yes, I get that now. It's just those gifts looked amazing. Yes, they do. And I understand that you can't wait to open them. But sometimes you have to be patient in life. And people who learn the art of patience never get disappointed in life. Well, I have learned my lesson. I'll sleep peacefully and 
will open the presents tomorrow morning. Very well. Now go to sleep. Good night, Tofu. Good night, Tia. Hey, Tofu. I was looking for you in the playground. What are you doing here? You look confused. Hi, Tia. I didn't feel like playing today. You know, Halloween is near, right? Look at me. I can't even pick a costume for myself. I want to look the best, Tia. I want others in the party to like me and become my best friends. Oh, dear Tofu. It is just a costume. Please don't be sad or confused. Come, let me tell you a story. A story of why you should be like a living pumpkin. A night with a living pumpkin. A living pumpkin? What does that mean, Tia? A living pumpkin, Tofu. The one Matthew and Jessica spent their Halloween with? Tia, I told you, I don't feel like playing today. Why are you talking in riddles to me? Oh dear Tofu, why do you get agitated so quickly? Alright, let me tell you what happened at Halloween last year. Matthew and Jessica were eagerly waiting for their parents to open the door. As soon as the door opened, the siblings rushed to their rooms and got ready for Halloween. Jessica got dressed up as the Red Riding Hood with a basket, with a stuffed Scooby-Doo toy as the Big Bad Wolf and on the other hand, Matthew became the Flash, the fastest man alive inspired by the Justice League. The neighborhood party had so many happy children dressed up in fabled attires. Even the siblings met their friends and had a gala time. As the night grew darker, Jessica and Matthew visited a couple of more houses until they reached the most deserted parts of their neighborhood. While they were casually strolling, Jessica noticed something that caused an abrupt halt. She grabbed her brother's arms and pointed towards a house. Jessica asked her brother in fright, Was this house always here or am I seeing it for the first time? Oh my God, does that mean the house was magical? You'll soon figure that out Tofu, but let me tell you, Despite the fact that they passed by the street on their way to school every day, Matthew wasn't sure if he had seen the house earlier or not. The house looked quite old and empty. Both of them were scared, but their curious little minds instigated them to inspect the house. As they stepped on the front porch, the wooden floor creaked and they saw cobwebs on the doorknob that was already unlocked. As they opened it, the door also creaked and something appeared with a voice saying, Hello! The siblings freaked out and ran out of the house in a split second, yelling with panic. On their way back home, Jessica realized she had lost her Scooby-Doo toy at the magical house, which meant the world to her. Matthew loved his sister so much that he couldn't refuse and both of them went back to the scary place to get Jessica's Scooby-Doo toy. They tiptoed their way across the lawn as they looked for the toy and right then a voice came from behind. Are you looking for this? They turned around in fear and saw a small boy in all brown clothes. Everything else appeared normal about him, but the pumpkin for a head. Jessica hid behind her brother. Matthew grabbed the nearby chair as a defense weapon. Tia, I'm too scared. Did the unknown voice hit them? 
Matthew, shaking with utmost fear, said, Give us our Scooby back or I'll hit you with this chair. I'm not kidding. To this, the unknown voice replied, No, no, I have no intention to harm you. I will give you your toy back. The unknown voice could be heard closely and now the siblings witnessed a boy behind the voice who came near and kept Scooby on the porch. As soon as he stepped back, Matthew picked the toy and gave it to Jessica and held the chair again in his hand. Both of them moved towards the exit gate to vanish in the next few seconds but suddenly a question struck Matthew. He asked the boy, What's wrong with your head? The boy got puzzled and didn't answer back. Matthew asked again, Why is your head a pumpkin? Unknown boy gathering courage answered, Oh yes, I guess my head is a bit strange to some. Why don't you come inside and I'll tell you about it. Can we have some cookies and chocolate milk together? My name is Carlson, by the way. Jessica looked comfortable by now and started to move towards his room. Matthew followed. To their surprise, the house was clean, cozy and the entire room illuminated with bright, soothing lights. As Jessica and Matthew sat near the fireplace, Carlson brought cookies and chocolate milk. Then he began with his story. This means it's time for a story within the story. I'm amazed, dear. Carlson introduced himself. I was brought to life by the wishes of a boy named Jack. He used to live here with his family, but he didn't have any friends to go trick or treating with. So he took a pumpkin, which was supposed to be a jack-o'-lantern, and made a wish to the stars. They granted his wishes by bringing me to life. A boy with a pumpkin head. We had so much fun that night. I made Halloween my favorite day. But the next day, when I woke up, no one was here and the house was empty. Since that day, I have been waiting for Jack to come back. Matthew and Jessica felt bad for him as they realized that Carlson was not scary but lonely. They bid a warm goodbye to Carlson and offered him candies which he graciously accepted. The next morning they came back to see Carlson. As the door knob was broken, they entered the house and saw a lone pumpkin on the table with a note that said, Until next Halloween. Both of them felt really sad but returned home with a promise that they will look forward to the next Halloween with Carlson, a living and a loving pumpkin. With this story, I hope you got your answers, Tofu. Yes, Tia, this was an amazing story. I learned that we should never judge a person by his looks. There might be much more beauty inside. So I wish to impress all the friends at the party. It can be only through how well I behave with them and not how unique my costume is. And also, I now know what my outfit is going to be. A living pumpkin. <laughs> all thanks to you, my dear Tia. was odd, wasn't it, Tia? Yes, it reminds me of Henry, the ghost of the Warren family house. Uh, what is Henry's story? Once upon a time, 
There lived a beautiful family of the Warrens. Jim and Alice and their two children, Penny and Rick. They had just moved into the new house. Penny and Rick loved the new house. Look Rick, I can see till the lake from my bedroom window. That's awesome Penny. Come and see from my window. I can see our garden. I am glad you love your rooms children. Maybe you can tie a swing for them on the large tree, Jim. The children were excited by the mom's suggestion. They quickly went to the garden and helped their dad tie the swing for them. Later, they came back into the house had a lovely supper and everybody went to sleep. It must have been a few hours into the night when Rick was awakened by a noise in the garden. He looked out of the window. It was the swing and someone was on it. Who is there? Hearing the sound, whoever was on the swing quickly got off and ran away. Rick also went back into his bed and fell asleep. The next morning, the Warrens gathered for breakfast. I saw someone on the swing last night. I couldn't see clearly in the dark, but it was someone shot. What? That's not possible, honey. I'm sure it was the wind playing tricks with you. Oh, mother, it is possible. I did see someone last night. The day wore on and everybody forgot about the person on the swing. Rick and Penny were playing in their room When Penny called. Hey Rick, look, there's someone on the lake. But there was no one that Rick could see. The next morning, the children told their parents about what they saw on the lake and their parents dismissed their fears yet again. A few days passed, the children kept seeing odd shapes and their parents kept refusing them. One day, Penny found that her maths homework book was missing. Soon Rick found that his favorite cricket bat was missing. But mom, dad, you have to believe us. The grown-ups were about to disagree with Rick and Penny again when suddenly, Mrs. Warren's two walk came flying at them. Everybody ducked. Looks like the children were right. There is a ghost in this house. Yes, there is. We must figure out what the ghost wants. And so everybody decided to talk to the ghost. They waited in Penny's room at night, hoping that the ghost will come to take more of her books. And right as they were, the ghost came and went to Penny's desk. Huh? 
Hello, Mr. Ghost. Oh, hello there. Everybody was shocked. The ghost was no more than a boy. How can we help you? Help me? Really? Yes, we would love to. That would be nice. I am stuck here like a ghost because I died before my last wish was not fulfilled. Really? Tell us, please. How can we help? My name is Henry. I was a very good student and I loved math. In the last week of my life, I had written a maths exam. I knew I would top the class, but before the teacher could declare my results, I died. I want to make my mother proud of me. I wish the teacher would check my test paper and she still keeps in her desk and tells my mother the score. As Jim and Alice watched Henry's ghost go out of the window, they decided to help him out. The next morning they inquired about Henry's school and teacher. Once they had found her, they went to her and requested her to please check his paper. Just as Henry had said, he scored the highest in class. Next, we must find Henry's mother. Let us talk to the principal. And so the Warrens got Henry's mother's address from the principal. They set off towards this address. They found Henry's mom and explained their case to her. Is my Henry all right? Yes, ma'am. And he loves doing math. And he wanted you to have this. My son Henry, he stood fast in class again. I am so happy. Suddenly, Henry appeared in front of her mother. Mother, I am so happy to see you. I kept my promise, Mom. I came first in class. All I wanted was for you to know that I came first. I feel free to go now. Henry, my son, I will always be proud of you. Jim, Alice, Rick and Penny. I will never forget this. Thank you so, so much. As everyone watched, Henry turned into a bright light and vanished. The Warrens returned to their home, never to be disturbed by any ghosts again. Wow, Tia! I never knew that there can be some good ghosts too. Well, Tofu, like there are good people and bad people in this world, there are good and bad ghosts too. You know, I have decided what I want to become for Halloween this week. Let me guess. Henry? Absolutely. How did you know, Tia? I just did. Now come on, let's go home before the cold wind comes back. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.